basically humanity as a whole has the potential to kind of work entirely together for, for no individual benefit. I think if you mm. can learn how yeah, to work yeah. in tandem with other people, like when you go to karaoke, yeah. Proud Mary comes on, mm. you instinctively know I'm Ike, you're Tina. Yeah, yeah, no, I get your point, <laughs> what, actually. You don't need yeah. to talk about it. You yeah. just move, you, the music yeah, starts yeah. and you just click in. It's like you don't yeah. need to explain it. We mm. just know. So by the end of series three of Stranger Things, uh, we know that Dart, the demodog, is part of a, uh, a group of hellish creatures from an alternate dimension who are coexisting together as a kind of hive mind, like a super organism. What happened with the sugar babes? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I, I'm yeah, going to yeah. show you a clip of uh, the Mind Flayer mm -hmm. recruiting some, uh, some new members to his cabal. OK. The new members are rats. Love rats. No, they're not, not love these rats. rats. These, oh. are, these are very faithful rats. Okay. <laughs> So at this point, the mind flare is kind of beckoning them in. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, and then, so they're now becoming part of the super organism. Now he's coalescing and um, sucking them all in. Growing his powers. <sighs> Nothing like that in nature happens exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly like but that, that is like yeah. the, that you is the formation of a of a superorganism. So just bringing organisms yeah. together to then mutually exist as one superorganism. Yeah, so so you can think of it so it's, you can think of an ant colony sometimes as a superorganism in that in that yes it's made up of lots of individual ants, but they all work together and cooperate together to do amazing things and they all have different roles to play within like within the, the organism that is the ant colony. So you can think of it either as one super organism or lots of little individual organisms. But also the individuals themselves don't really matter, like they will happily sacrifice themselves oh, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. The, for the greater good. Now, I, I realise you've got a lot more questions about super organisms. Yes, I have. Do I? You are in luck, because I've lined up Gabriella Contarides. Uh, I really want to ask you about slime mould, please, oh. Oh. because I really love slime mould. <laughs> what can you tell me about it? So it's basically, it lives normally as unicellular organisms, so just one little cell by itself. Um, and during a period where there's lots of food, that's fine. But the minute there's low food in the environment, they seem to all combine together to form this much bigger organism that has almost like hive mind, it can kind of figure out what to do. It's been shown to be able to escape mazes. It really likes oats. So they'll follow pieces oats. of oats mm. and eat the oats and they'll escape from one Petri dish into another one. And they kind of have these tentacles that they spread out and figure out where to go. So there's really cool experiments with slime mold. It's, it's a pretty cool thing to study. And like Stranger Things as well, just like tendrils, like gooey tendrils spreading everywhere. And they don't have a brain. There's no, there's no brain. How are they doing it? Yeah, they, we don't know what's controlling it, that they're, re they're reacting to environmental triggers, but we don't actually understand, you know, how does it decide to go one way or another way? Yeah, because that's yeah. exhibiting yeah. intelligence. Like, if it can come up with the, the most economical routes to, to find food, it's reacting to, to its environment. Like, you can't say that's not smart, can you? Well, it, isn't it just... It's chemistry in the end, isn't it? It's sensing something and uh, going to go that way and create this link there and that. I mean, I don't want to do down slime moulds. Sounds like you do want to do down <laughs> slime moulds. Well, uh, there's something in me. Some of it reacts to the fact that you love them so much. <laughs> so I just like, have to bring them down. But, but it, it's just chemistry, isn't it, right? Well, yeah, but what is... I mean, that's what we're doing as well. When it's hot, we're reacting to the environment and we're taking a jumper off or we're putting one on. We also react to kind of environmental triggers. We're just a bit bigger than slime mould, although yeah, slime yeah. mould can actually... You're no better than a slime mould, Michael. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Gabriella. Thank you. I swear we already have a kind of hive mind in that, you know, we are in constant contact with each other. And, you know, basically humanity as a whole has the potential to kind of work entirely together for, for no individual benefit. I think if you can mm. learn how yeah, to work yeah. in tandem with other people, like when you go to karaoke, yeah. Proud Mary comes on, mm. you instinctively know I might, you're Tina. Yeah, yeah, no, I get your point. <laughs> That's what, you don't need yeah. to talk about it. You yeah. just move, you know, the music yeah, starts yeah. and you just click in. It's like you don't yeah. need to explain it. We mm. just know.